Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing my top five debut authors of 2013. Now again, as I said for all the other videos, this has been such a hard decision to make because there's been so many good debuts that I've read this year, or debuts, I don't know how you say it, debut, debut, debuts I've read this year, and to narrow it down to just five was nearly impossible. I've chosen five, and they all, they span different genres as well, these aren't all from the same genre, and they span different age groups and kind of um, categories as well. So the first one is Fractured by Danny Atkins. Now I read this book quite recently and it was a book that I was quite kind of... When I started reading it I wasn't sure that I was going to love it because it kind of didn't really make much sense to me, the blurb. And I thought, oh no, this is probably going to be like a really rubbish kind of um, dystopian kind of fantasy novel. But actually it wasn't at all. It was so so good and you will not be able to see what is coming in this book and I know that everyone said it about this book but the ending is just something else you will not you will not be able to predict what happens at the end um, and it's about a girl called I think it's yeah Rachel and one night she and her friends go out for a meal and a car crashes into the building or the restaurant that they're eating in and her friend um, is it Daniel? Is it Daniel, 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 Daniel? See, my my brain is rubbish at remembering things. Jimmy, is it Jimmy or is it Daniel? I think it's... Okay, let's just say one of her friends, her really good friend, dies in an accident and he... And then she gets really upset and then she lives a life of just complete and utter desperation and upset. But then there's another side of the story where actually the night of the accident all of her friends survive and everything's fine and she's living these two parallel worlds one where everything's gone really badly and everyone's kind of unhappy and all of her friends have fallen apart and her best friend has died and her dad's got cancer but then she's living in this parallel universe where everything's fine and all of her friends are still together and her best friend is still alive and her dad's fine and he's healthy and it's kind of like trying to work out why she's living two different lives and how she's living two different lives and which one is her reality and which one's perhaps a fantasy and how like it works and it's such a clever and interesting plot and it's really unique as well and I think that you should definitely read this book if you haven't because I think this is probably one of the most raved about books this at the like in the last half of this year and um, so it's only published in November I think so definitely worth reading if you haven't read it. The second book is called Brooklyn Girls and I think it, this is Pia's story, and this is by Gemma Burgess, 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 again sorry for pronunciation of names because I'm rubbish at that. This is a new adult um, book, which is like the new adult genre, and this is about a girl called Pia who is not really living the American dream. She's jobless, she's clueless, she's unemployable, she's broke, and she lives in a Brooklyn townhouse with her four best friends. and she has her dad says to her like you need to get a job or you're going to come and live back at home with us because we can't keep supporting you and she says oh, i'll get a job i'll get a job and then she finds it really hard because she's like struggling with boys and like friendships and all those kinds of things and then in the end she manages to set up her own business and it's a really cool business and it's like really clever and it's like a really really good story and i think or i know i well i don't know for certain but i think that Gemma Burgess is writing like a series about these Brooklyn girls and each one is going to like focus on different characters so this one was Pia's story and I think the next one is going to be is it Anna's story um Angie's story in spring 2014 yeah so that's definitely going to happen Angie's story so that will be really interesting to see the characters as they've moved on and how Pia's now living and how all the other characters have moved on since this book which will be really interesting um so yeah this is a really like a nice book to read it was my kind of first step into the NA genre this year um, and I think that was it's, it kind of impressed me and I liked the characters I liked because I could kind of relate to the main character who was you know she was unemployed she didn't know what to do with her life she was just stuck in a rut um, so it was really nice to kind of read a book about a girl my age who actually managed to kind of overcome things and make it um, a success of herself which is really nice the next debut book is called Just What Kind of Mother Are You by Paula Daly now I really really loved this book again <laughs> I'm just gonna constantly keep saying I love these books but this was again a book that caught me from the very first like tagline which was what happens if your best friend child goes missing and it's all your fault 
I thought that was really really nice like a really intriguing book and I thought the cover was impressive and the storyline was really fantastic and it's all about um, a woman who is struggling with her life she's really busy and she has like completely for forgets things and one day she's running late and then she realizes that she should have picked her friend's daughter up and then she kind of thinks oh my god what's happened and then it kind of escalates from there and then this child's gone missing and she feels completely responsible for it but then like there's other reasons like she shouldn't just feel completely responsible and then people are all dark and scary and it's really really interesting and the conclusion was one that I wasn't expecting either at all it was a really odd ending well not odd ending that's the wrong kind of word but it was a really strange conclusion to the book that I wasn't expecting which is always good because I don't like books I can predict so this was definitely really interesting to see how Paula ended the book in such a strange and unpredictable manner but that doesn't stop me it from being enjoyable because this was a really great book and this was Paula's debut novel as obviously these are all debut novels and it says that she is working on her next novel which I'm excited about because I love this one so much so hopefully her next novel will be just as good if not better the next one is Billy and Me by Giovanna Fletcher. Now again, if you've been following me on Twitter or Facebook or my blog, you'll know how much I really wanted to read this book. And as soon as I heard that Giovanna was writing a book, I was like, I need to read that book. Um, so when it arrived in the post, I was super, super excited and so thankful to people at Penguin who sent it to me. And this was about a girl called Sophie May, who is working at a little kind of tea room in her little village and one day they are filming a kind of TV remake of Pride and Prejudice and the person who's playing Mr Darcy walks in and he is a famous rock star no he's not a famous rock star that's a completely different book he's a famous actor who um, walks in and Sophie doesn't really recognise him and they kind of form a friendship and then they start to fall in love with each other and then Sophie gets thrown into Billy's crazy world and she has to try and navigate her life and keep herself in the shadows because she's got a secret so she doesn't want to come out and she just wants to kind of be hidden and secret but Billy's world is completely different to that and it's kind of her trying to fit into his world and trying to make her love survive different kind of hurdles and this is a really really lovely book I gave it five, 5 out of 5 stars I thought it was really fantastic for a debut I thought this was probably the best debut of the year so far and I'm really, really excited about her second novel, which is, I think it's called You, Him and Me, which is due out in March or May this year. Again, not quite sure, but I'm really, really excited about that. And yeah, this was a really, really nice quick read as well. It was quite easy to get through. It was quite fast paced. It was nicely, nice characters, nice levels of emotion, different layers and different subplots were really good because that meant that there, it wasn't just a focus on the two main characters which can sometimes be a little bit kind of claustrophobic so it's nice to get other characters in as well so yeah really really lovely book really good debut and i'm so excited about the next one and then finally the last debut is i think this is a debut see this is the problem i have i yeah this is how this is her first novel is kiss me first by lottie Mo, mogok i'm sorry i can't pronounce your surname lottie mogok mogak Lottie, I don't, I'm not sure, but there's a the cover anyway. Kiss Me First by Lottie McGuck. <laughs> um, this was odd. This this book was really quite odd. Um, it was... The, the plot was interesting. It was about a girl who had to pretend to be another girl on the internet while this other one ran away and then killed herself or something like that. And it was really quite a novel... A novel idea like excuse the pun but it was really interesting and quite unique and I didn't really know where it was going at times I was just a bit like okay this is a bit odd but it was definitely um, an interesting and com compuls compulsing compulsive com compulsive yeah is that the right word to say it was a compulsive debut I just couldn't stop reading it and I didn't want to put it down and I was quite gutted when it finished because I was like oh okay that's it then but it was it was really interesting and the Again, the characters are really interesting. The pace was good. It was, it was a good book, and it was a, it was one of the good debuts of twenty thirteen. So if you haven't read it, then I definitely recommend that you do pick it up and give it a go because it's really, really good, and I just love the cover as well. That's what drew me in first. So that is my top five debuts, and I think if you have to read one, 
of these and then I would make sure it was Billy and Me by Giovanna Fletcher because this was probably, out of them all, probably my most favourite debut um, and also we definitely know that she's got another one coming so if you want to kind of get into her style of writing and find out what she's like as an author before you read her next one then this is a perfect book to do it with but yeah all of these books are definitely worth reading if you haven't already and I hope that this has been an enjoyable video for you and that you've enjoyed finding out my favourite debuts of 2013 and I will be back soon with my top 10 books of 2013 so all of my favourite books of 2013 in one big haul so thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon bye